Investing is the secret to building wealth, and if you're looking to place $1,000 somewhere this year to make it much bigger, then you're in the right place. However, this entirely depends on whether this is the only $1,000 you're planning to invest, or if you'll have $1,000 now and will consistently have more in the future. To start, we'll talk about only having $1,000 to invest and that's all, meaning you'll put it somewhere and just let it do its thing. Through the next 10 years, actually returns averaged about 50% a year, and they, I think they were 37 points better than the Dow per year, something like that. But that I was working with a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of money. So you've saved up $1,000 and are planning to invest it in the stock market or invest it in even more risky assets. Firstly, congrats on this, because you've already done more than most people. You saved that $1,000. Unfortunately, I have some bad news. Placing this money in the stock market is probably not the best idea if it's the only $1,000 you plan to invest for a while. Let's take an example. Imagine that the year you invest your money, the stock market has a major upswing and brings back a return of 25% in the year. This is 15% above the average and most professional investors would jump for joy getting a return like this. Now, this would be amazing if you had something like $100,000 or more invested in the market. But what about your $1,000? Well, this would only bring back a return of $250, which really won't change your life at all. It's just not that much for the time it takes. Some of you may think that the best place to put your money would be in a savings or CD since it gives guaranteed returns, right? Well, let's have a look and see how you would fare doing this. As of February 2023, the average return through a savings account is an extremely small 0.33%. That means putting your money in a savings account for 5 years would give you a net total of $1,106. Yikes! While you get a guaranteed return, you'll never build wealth this way. What about CDs or certificates of deposit? For those who don't know, these are basically like savings accounts, except that you can't touch the money for a certain amount of time unless you want to pay a hefty fee. Let's see how this would play out for you. The average CD rate for a 5-year term is 1.37%, which isn't that bad, but sadly it won't give you anything worthwhile. Your $1,000 would grow to a measly $1,068. That's enough to buy you a nice pair of jeans or some new shoes. But who wants to wait five years just to do something like that? Again, this won't get you wealthy. And even if you were to invest this money in the stock market for five years at an average return of 7%, then you'd still only end up with $1,400. This is by far the best option, but it just won't change your life. You may be panicking right now, but there's actually something you can do that will allow you to make more money so you can invest more money and thus grow your wealth. Most people go through life using up a very, very small part of their potential. And so anything you do that invests in yourself, uh, is, that's the best investment you can possibly make. And then I would, I would follow my passion. I mean, whatever turns you on. As Warren Buffett said here, the best thing you can do is educate yourself and invest in yourself. That means learning new skills that can be of use to any company you work for now and in the future. The more valuable you are, the more you'll be paid. It's really simple when you think of it that way. You can invest in yourself through things like books, webinars, seminars, or courses. The more skills you have, the more you'll be kept by companies, and the less likely you'll be laid off as is happening now all over the country. Some examples of things you can do are marketing and coding, which are both becoming highly valuable assets in just about any industry. Essentially, you want to look for skills that are highly sought after but not many people have. A famous quote from Charlie Munger that supports this goes as follows. Develop into a lifelong self-learner through voracious reading. Cultivate curiosity and strive to become a little wiser every day. The more you learn, the more you grow, and the more you grow, the more your money and happiness will grow. The other thing you can do with $1,000 is to work on creating another income source. The great thing about this generation is that it's extremely easy to make another source of income because of the internet. The hard part is doing the work and lifting that business off the ground. However, if you invest in your knowledge, then you can take action to create something with it. Then, you can use the money you make from that to either invest in your business to grow it more, and when it makes even more money, 
you can invest it in the stock market. So, you have a steady income, saved up $1,000, and you plan on putting more money every month into whatever you want. As was said before, even if you have money coming in constantly, you always want to invest in your education and grow yourself, and it'll never let you down. But the question is, what else can you do? What you're looking for here is a source of passive income. So that's placing your $1,000 and whatever amount you plan to add every month and letting that money make money for you while you also work and make money for yourself. In fact, a powerful quote from Buffett confirms the importance of making your money work for you. If you don't find a way to make money while you sleep, you will work until you die. And who wants to work their whole lives? Not many, I'm sure. Now, the first and most common way to get a source of passive income is through the stock market. But when I say stock market, I don't mean it in the way that everyone thinks of it. For most people, the stock market is a place where you can invest in a huge number of companies. For example, you can buy stock from companies like Tesla, IBM, or Google. When you buy shares of these companies or any other, you own a small part of the company. When they make money, you make money. If they lose money, you lose it too. This happens either through the price per share going up or down, or getting paid more or less with dividends. But the way you should invest in the stock market is through index funds. 14 presidents, 7 Republicans, 7 Democrats. We've had, we've had world wars, we had 9-11, we had the Cuban Missile Crisis, we have, a, we have all kinds of things. The best single thing you could have done on March 11th, 1942, when I bought my first stock, was just buy an index fund. While Warren Buffett is a clear supporter of this, let's use an example to illustrate further. Imagine that you put all your funds into Tesla, but for some reason, the car battery on all the latest models just stops charging with no clear fix. This leaves thousands of people not able to drive their cars and potentially cause harmful accidents. To make matters worse, there's no way to fix them except by replacing the entire car. Unfortunately, Tesla can't afford to replace all these cars, and on top of that, they got hit with a bunch of lawsuits from people who were hurt and the insurance companies. This causes them to go bankrupt. Now, you have your money in this company, and without a single fault of your own, you lose everything you have. But the opposite can happen too. Let's say Tesla manages to create a battery that charges twice as fast and can drive you double the distance on a single charge. This would boost their sales massively, and now the amount you invested doubles and shows no sign of slowing down anytime soon. That's the thing about investing in individual companies. You can get massive returns, but it's also way more risky because if you don't make a good choice, you can lose everything. A good rule of thumb to follow is that if you don't have time to study companies and learn about investing, then it's best to avoid it altogether. There's more to investing than picking the next hype company, but this is where index funds come in. Index funds are essentially a basket of companies that you can invest in, meaning that you can skip the whole process of trying to find the next best company. Some examples are like investing in the general market, a specific sector like tech, or even companies that give dividends. The best part is that these companies are very easy to buy. In fact, they're just as simple as stocks. The one thing I have to tell you though is that you're not guaranteed to make money when you invest, even with index funds. So always do your due diligence and don't blindly do what you're told. These are just going to be examples of things you can invest in. As a start, you can go with the general market funds which are safe and reliable. It's a great beginner option. Two of the most popular choices are VOO and SPY. These will give you exposure to the top 500 companies in the US. What you can expect is that if the US economy rises, so will the fund, and if the economy goes down, then you can expect the fund to go down too. If you want to get involved with tech, you can go with VGT or QQQ. These will expose you to companies like Microsoft, AMD, or Google. Both of these funds have different companies, so make sure you do some research to see what you like more. Lastly, if you want dividend payouts, then consider VYM or SDY. When you invest in this fund, you'll get exposure to a bunch of companies that pay you to invest in them. When you're looking to invest in these funds, there's a way that'll generate the most bang for your buck. What you want to do is anytime you get a paycheck, you want to take a portion of it, like 10 to 15%, and automatically place it into your account. This way, you won't accidentally spend money you should be using for investing. As Buffett famously said, 
Do not save what is left after spending, but spend what is left after saving. The second way you can use your $1,000 and additional money after is through real estate. Of course, $1,000 isn't enough to buy a house that you can rent out to someone, but there are plenty of other options available now thanks to the internet. For example, you can use a crowdfunding real estate platform that allows you to place small amounts like $1,000 with other investors to fund real estate. So, if the real estate makes money, so do you. If the property value goes up, you get more out of it too. These platforms primarily pay through passive income that's gained through rent. However, it's important to know that this money isn't liquid since it's in physical real estate. It's not as easy to sell a home as it is to sell a stock. But if you're comfortable with investing in physical real estate, you don't have the capital to buy your own property, and aren't concerned with not having access to your money for some time, then this is the way to go. Lastly, you can get access to indirect real estate through REITs or Real Estate Investment Trusts. With REITs, you invest in a company that invests in real estate, but it operates the same way. You get paid dividends from the money that comes in through rent and other sales, but without being tied up in physical properties. REITs also tend to pay higher dividends as the companies are required to give 90% of the profits to shareholders. Some examples of REITs are VNQ and USRT. If you don't want to invest in any way, then there's one thing you can do with your money, and that's to pay down your debt ASAP. You can't make progress in your financial life going around borrowing money at 18 or 20 percent. You can make a lot of money by lending it out at 18 or 20 percent over time, you know, if you can find anybody that's good that uh, will borrow from you. But you don't want to be on the side of the equation that's always behind in life. Paying debt early is just like a return on investment. Let's say you have a 4% interest rate loan like a car, mortgage, or student loan. If you pay it off a year early, then you've effectively made a 4% return because that's one extra year you don't have to pay the bank. So if you're afraid to invest in the stock market right now or don't want to hop into real estate, then this is your next best bet. It will allow you to have much more cash available as you have fewer expenses every month. The faster you pay off debt, the less interest you'll have and more money you can keep in your pockets.